There are few things that compare with homemade puff pastry, with its flaky layers and its buttery flavor, but it's a time-consuming process, creating hundreds of layers of dough and butter that puff up to great heights. In this episode, I'll show you how to create a glamorous, unforgettable dessert made with season's best fruit, with a shortcut called Rough Puff Pastry. Classic puff pastry is made by folding a sheet of dough around a slab of butter, rolling it out into a long rectangle, and then folding it, and repeating this process over and over, with refrigeration time in between each one of these folds. While this creates wonderful layers, it's a really long process. Instead, I like to use a rough puff. By the time we're done with this magical dough, you won't be able to tell the difference between a classic puff pastry and my rough puff. So I start out with all-purpose flour, some salt, and with a pastry blender, just gonna mix these two ingredients up, and I'm going to add my butter. As you can see, the butter is very cold, and it's also cut into large chunks, larger than we've been using for our pie doughs. In this goes to the flour, and we're going to use the pastry blender to cut the butter into the flour. As you can see, I'm using some pressure to chop down on the butter. I'm using a bit of a rocking motion to cut through. So I'm gonna continue this chopping process until the dough looks dry and rough, and the butter is in one half to three quarter inch chunks. Let's take a look here. Use my hand. This looks just about right. As you can see, this dough is much rougher and has much larger pieces of butter than we did in pie doughs. We're definitely going for something much flakier. Now we're gonna add some ice water. We're gonna add about a half a cup and now continue the chopping motion with the pastry blender until you get a rough, shaggy dough. And now I'm gonna dump this shaggy dough out onto the counter and I'm gonna start the rolling and folding process. I know it seems hard to believe that this mess of dough is gonna to come together to be a perfectly beautiful, even puff pastry. But follow along and you'll see. I'm just gonna use a rolling pin as well as a bench scraper and we're gonna shape this into a six by 18 rectangle. Let's just double check and see where we are. We've got a ways to go. If your dough starts sticking to your rolling pin, take a little flour in your fingers and rub off the excess and then dust the top of your puff lightly with a little bit of flour and continue rolling. You begin to see as it's beginning to create the layers of butter. And now we're gonna do what's called a double book fold. I'm gonna take one short end and fold it into the middle and take the opposite end and again fold that towards the center. From there, fold one half on top of the other. This is what would be referred to as my first turn. We're going to piece together our rectangle and we're going to give it a turn so the short side, one short side is facing you and the folded edge is on my right hand side and we're going to roll out again. See already you can start to see this dough coming together. You can see I'm being a little particular with my edges and my ends, trying to keep it as square as possible. That way, when you fold, you make sure that the layers are even. And now for another double book fold. Short end to the center, and the other one towards the center. Fold over one more time. Okay, now we're gonna wrap our dough in some plastic wrap and refrigerate it for about 20 minutes before we do our final double book fold. Now that my dough has had a chance to chill and relax in the fridge, we're gonna give it one more turn. We're going to lightly flour our work surface, position our dough with the folded side, the seam side on the, my right-hand side, lightly flour, just enough to prevent it from sticking, and we're gonna roll it out. As you can see, it's quite firm now, but that's good, we want that. Going from the center out, and again, using my bench scraper, 
making sure that it's not sticking. And you can already see the nice pieces of butter that are layered in here. It's okay to go sideways a little to square out your edges. Not too much though, you really shouldn't need it. Let's check this out. Yep. Now we're gonna do one last double book turn. We're gonna do it the same way we did the first two times, but this time I don't need the bench scraper because it's turning into a nice smooth and supple dough. Center, that looks great. Over onto itself and turn it onto its side. Now I'm gonna cut the dough into two pieces, one slightly larger than the other one. You can see I'm using my bench scraper to cut through. You can also use a sharp knife. And wrap it up, pop it into the fridge, really let it chill one last time. About two hours should do it. For this tart, we're gonna roll out the dough into a large rectangle and then cut out strips from the remaining dough to build a high border around the edge. We'll start with a smaller rectangle keeping the remainder wrapped in plastic and off to the side. On a lightly floured surface, we're gonna roll this piece of dough to about a nine by 14 inch rectangle. We're gonna make sure that we're lightly flouring as we go along. You can certainly roll this on parchment if you'd like, like we did with the other doughs. I find it just as easy to do it on the counter. It's a nice, stable dough. Keep your ruler nearby so you don't go too far in one direction. Turn it on its side. Don't worry at this point if your edges are rough. We'll be trimming them off later. Okay, this looks like it's ready to go. I'm gonna bring in my cookie sheet that I've lined with a piece of parchment and check the surface for any sticky parts. We're gonna gently roll this around the pin and Unroll. And now I'm just going to use a pastry brush to get rid of any excess flour on the surface of the pastry. Using my trusty ruler, I'm going to measure out an 8 by 13 inch rectangle. Both sides here. To trim the edges, I'm going to use a large chef knife instead of a smaller paring knife because I get nice clean lines. A small paring knife and using a sawing motion will tend to mash together those layers and prevent them from puffing up when they're baking. So I'll set this aside while I roll out the remaining dough. This second piece of dough, I'm rolling out to an 11 and a half by 14 inch rectangle. It's also worth noting that at any point during your rolling, you find that the dough is softening and you can start to feel the butter breaking through. It's best to stop cover the dough, slide it onto a cookie sheet, and refrigerate it for a few minutes to chill. You'll notice that I slide my hands underneath the dough. I'm checking to make sure it's not sticking, because if it's sticking, it can throw off the measurement of my dough. Once again, I'm brushing off any excess flour, and I'll use my ruler to mark out 13 inches by 11 inches. And using my large knife, I'll trim off the excess. So from here, I'm going to cut four strips lengthwise. They'll be about three quarters of an inch thick. Check and make sure your dough isn't sticking. And I'm just going to slide these long pieces out of harm's way. And then from here, I'm going to cut four strips crosswise. Again, about three quarters of an inch thick. OK, now we're ready to build up our sides. We're going to use a clean pastry brush and a little bit of water, brushing off excess flour first. And we're just going to moisten the top of the shorter strips first, a little bit of the water. And I'm gonna transfer them and flip them wet side down to the short side. And now I'm gonna go ahead and moisten the long strips. And one piece at a time onto the dough, wet side down, and overlapping the corners, just like that. Next one. And then go back to your short strips. Still feel plenty wet. 
and lay them on top of the first one. And you notice I'm not pushing down on this. I want to make sure I keep my edge nice and clean. And finally, the last two long strips. OK, this is ready to fill. I've already made my hazelnut frangipan. It comes together really quickly in a food processor. And I'm going to scrape it into the middle of my tart. And I'm going to use my offset spatula, nice small one, to spread it evenly over the inside of the tart. OK, now we're ready for the pears. I'm using ripe pears, and I've peeled them and cut out the inside core and stem with a small melon baller. And I'm going to slice them into thin slices, keeping the slices intact. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. I'm going to use my same offset spatula to transfer the pears onto the filling. But first, I'm just going to fan those pear slices out just a bit and slide them right onto the tart. As you can see, I'm going to alternate the direction of the pears. You can fiddle with the slices a little bit, but this is a really nice rustic tart. Don't fuss with them too much. And finally, I'm going to sprinkle over a little cinnamon and sugar. So bake the tart in a 425 degree oven until it's puffed and golden brown. It'll take about 25 minutes. OK, it looks like our tart's done. Mmm, smells wonderful. And just look at all these gorgeous layers of puff pastry. And it all started with that shaggy mess of a dough.